Um, Amelia, well played. We'll talk about your knock in a, in a moment, but from a team point of view, obviously not the result that we were hoping to get tonight. Yeah, obviously it's um, it's, a, it's not a nice feeling. Obviously never never winning losing a game. Sorry, but um, yeah, I think the halfway stage with 160, big boundaries, bit of pressure um, with the ball. We thought we were in the game, which we were, um, trying to take it as deep as possible. I think 160 was a match-winning pass score here in the last two years, so there was confidence there, and we kind of um, used to try to use some momentum back end of the innings to try and go with the, the first power, well, first six overs in that power play and get a couple of wickets, but it didn't quite happen. And um, yeah, good game in the end, but can get over the line. Just looking at that surface, I mean, obviously you batted on it for a while, so it'd be interesting to get your take on it. Just looked as though the old one was gripping a little bit, wasn't perhaps coming on, and it's why we thought, as, as you obviously, that 160 was, if not uh, a particularly substantial score, at least a competitive one. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, the boundaries play a big part. The pockets are quite big, but it's, it's, a, it's a wicket where, in the middle overs with spin, um, it can be really tricky to get going. And once as well, you've got a set batsman, it's easier, but getting new batters in, it's quite hard to start, the, um, the lads were saying. So that was always the thing, trying to get wickets throughout. But for myself, I think um, it was about playing strong shots, but definitely, um, I think, easier up top yeah. in the power play. And then once um, spinners came on, a bit of grip, like you said, um, some were skidding on quite nicely. So it was kind of a little bit inconsistent, which is why I think when we lost a couple of wickets, 10, 11, 12 overs in, we tried to kind of take it a bit deeper, um, especially as I was a set batter. Um, so yeah, again, probably could have done with another 10, uh, 10, 15, but again, I think, you know, um, there's a couple of things, if, we, if they go away when we're bowling, it could yeah. be a different game. Yeah. From a personal point of view, obviously it's only your what, fifth or sixth T20 match, first half century, I know you'd be very keen not to be pigeonholed as a player, you want to be the, the complete package and play in all formats, so to get a 50 under your belt must be pleasing. Yeah, it is. I mean, um, it's not surprising. I think for me, like I know what I can bring to the team. It's been frustrating um, having missed out, you know, last year, and then obviously not playing this year. It feels like I've got a lot to give in this format. Um, but yeah, it's one of those where, when I'm, I wasn't expecting to play. To be honest, I got called called up quite late. When I get that chance, I'm just ready to take it um, and do what I can, you know, which is um, set a foundation to work from. We've got such a strong middle order as well. Um, you know, if I can kind of get a good start with Linny, and you've got Willow and, and Safe coming in and Cobby, great, some, some experience there. Um, it can really help. So yeah, it's nice to do that, and hopefully that you know kind of means that I get a, bit, a few games under my belt now, and I can really kind of um, build that momentum yeah. into playing all three formats of this club. Because, like I said last year, I played two formats, but the format I really want to get involved in is the T20. So yeah, it's nice. I have to ask you about Nathan Souter. Um, eight overs, nine for 29 in the two games against North Amplature in the, this competition this season. Sick to death of the sight of him, aren't they? Yeah, I think, um, obviously I didn't play that first game, but he's obviously bowled well and bowled smart, I think. Um, this game, um, definitely bowled smart. And I think um, it's one of those things where you kind of want to t t take the bowler down almost and kind of, you know, if he's a bit of the danger man, look to take him down and. Uh, get him out of the attack but at the same time sometimes you've got to take take your medicine and see him off if he's bowling well so it's one of those things but he's bowled well um, smart like I said I think with this format bowl, the best bowlers are the smart bowlers the ones that have a clear plan and bowl to their fielders um, and he, he made it tough uh, for us but fair play to him you know he bowled well just looking ahead now, we'll move on. Uh, Edgbaston on Friday, never an easy place to go in T20 cricket, but um, I'm sure you'll be hoping to be in this side again and um, just with a group that everyone is still beating everybody else, there's still everything to play for. Yeah, I think, um, I'm not sure where they're on the table, but if they're up there, well, I know that they're up there somewhere and they're a tough team, And but obviously Edgbaston on Friday night's going to be, a, gonna be a, a nice one to play. And for me, I'm looking forward to it. I think we should all be, that's the games you want to play. They're the big games, but I don't see why we can't go there, go go there and perform uh, and take it to them. I mean, Willow just spoke there in the debrief about sticking together as a group. We've got two days off now, um, but we, there's some great cricket in there. It's just about trying to put it all together at the same time. Uh, it's slightly disappointing, obviously we've dropped a few catches as well, and they they can really affect the game in this format as well. But um, they are a strong team, but I think. We've, we've still got that, that confidence. I don't think we can be as fragile as confidence going up and down from wins and losses. We've got to stick together and back ourselves. 
um, and then we've obviously got a break after that. So um, give it our all on Friday and uh, hopefully we can put on a show.